Y'all, obviously there is a lot going on in our nation right now with the attempt on former President Trump's life. It has been a crazy last week and a half, and we are truly in the middle of a historical moment right now. But God has been dealing with me a lot about this. He's been putting some things on my heart about this. And the message I keep hearing is do not be deceived. Things are not as they seem. Now, this message is not political in nature or about the presidency or who's going to be president or anything like that. But this is a message directed at God's people. This is a warning to stay awake and to pay attention. And the Lord keeps putting on my heart, things are not as they seem. This is not a time for celebration. It's a time for intercession. One of the passages that keeps coming to mind is Matthew chapter 16, 4, that says, an evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given it to them except the sign of Jonah. Now the Pharisees and Sadducees are demanding Jesus do a sign to prove that he is who he says he is. And he tells them, you can interpret the sky, to predict the weather, but you cannot interpret the signs of the time. Saying, I'm standing right in front of you. It's been prophesied. I'm doing everything that's been prophesied and fulfilling this, and you don't even see it. And you're demanding that I do a sign. This also tells me that the signs of the times must, in fact, be interpreted. They're not going to be obvious to everyone. Everybody's not going to see this and say, oh, we're in the end times. Oh, this is the great apostasy. Oh, this is the great rebellion that was predicted. Many people are not going to realize it, and it calls for interpretation according to what God's Word says. For those who are prayerful, for those who are in His Word and abide in His Word and know His Word, for those who are watchful, they will be able to interpret the signs of the times. So Jesus responds to them and says, an evil and adulterous generation will seek for a sign. Adulterous, why? He's talking about a spiritual adultery here. A spiritual adultery that will go after any God or any spirit that does the sign that they want to see. Guys, this is what the Lord is speaking to me right now. We cannot seek signs. We cannot seek wonders. We cannot go after any spirit just because it prophesies or any spirit just because it can heal somebody or do some mighty work or some kind of miracle. He's saying an evil and adulterous generation runs after these kinds of of signs. Well, why did Jesus say that? What did he have in mind? Well, it's because Jesus knows the future. He warned us in Matthew chapter 7 to beware of false prophets. He tells us in Matthew chapter 24 when they ask, what are the signs of the end of the age? He says, see that no one will lead you astray, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. And you'll hear of wars and rumors of wars and see that you're not alarmed for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are but the beginning of the birth pains. Does that sound familiar to you? It does to me. And then, meaning in that time, they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. This is happening in other countries, y'all, and this is coming to the land of America. And then in that time, many will fall away and they'll betray one another and they will hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. And then he says down here in verse 24, for false Christ and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. Who are the elect? If you're a Christian, that's you and that's me. So these false signs and wonders are designed to woo away God's people from the truth. Jesus says an evil and adulterous generation seeks a sign knowing that there was a day coming when false prophets would arise and do actual signs and wonders. They would do actual miracles and they would actually prophesy and it would be accurate. Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3. He says, let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come, talking about the rapture, talking about the return of Jesus Christ, unless the rebellion comes first. And the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, talking about the Antichrist. 
says Jesus is not coming back until we see the great falling away and the man of lawlessness is revealed. What is rebellion here? It's the word apostasia. It's where we get our word apostasy and falling away right here. So Jesus warns us of this great falling away. Paul writes to the Thessalonians, let no one deceive you. This rebellion will come first. Look at verse 9. The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and all false signs and wonders, with all wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Therefore, God sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false. I know it's tempting at first to say, well, this is for the world. This is for the non-believers. This is for the ones who aren't Christians. But that's not what this says. Look at it. Unless the rebellion comes first. Apostasy means to fall away. You cannot fall away from something you were not in to begin with. He is talking about people who bear the name of Jesus, who claim to be Christians, who say they are his, are going to be wooed away by false signs and wonders. These are the words of Scripture, not mine. This is the prediction of Scripture, the prophetic words of the Word of God, not mine. But the Lord is putting on my heart that we cannot be deceived. We must stay awake. We must stay vigilant. We must stay aware and we must test the spirits. Y'all, false prophets are not way out in left field. They're not just prophesying something absolutely delusional and crazy to where no one believes it. More likely than not, these false prophets are more accurate than they are inaccurate. They're usually that one degree off where things sound really good. They're really close, but something about it just isn't right. And you have to be walking in the Spirit of God to detect it. You have to have the Holy Spirit and be walking in discernment. You have to be abiding in His Word. You have to be abiding in relationship with Jesus in order to pick up on these things. Remember Acts chapter 16. There was a slave girl with the spirit of divination who prophesied 100% accurately. It took Paul a few days to realize that this girl actually had a spirit of divination, one of the few demons named in the New Testament, and he cast it out of her. But this girl was prophesying absolutely 100% correct, but it was still demonic in nature. As the Spirit of God is poured out on all flesh, Acts chapter 2, 17, and your sons and daughters will prophesy, the enemy is going to try and replicate this with his false signs and wonders as well. He's not a creator, but he's a replicator. He's going to try to mimic what God is doing as to call confusion amongst people. So we have to be able to discern what is the spirit of God and what is a counterfeit spirit? What is the spirit of divination? What is the spirit of Antichrist? What is the difference and how can we tell? If you'll recall the prophets of the Old Testament, when the children of Israel begin to turn and walk away from God due to their idolatry because they were adulterous, spiritually adulterous, he would often even call them the harlot because they had eyes for other gods. So what would God do? He would raise up prophetic voices to say, repent, return to the Lord. Remember where you came from. Remember who you belong to. Remember the God that delivered you out of Egypt. That is the nature of prophecy to give the people the word of God that will ultimately return them back to his word, back to him and back to his heart. And it calls people to a place of repentance and returning and turning back away from their idolatry and back to God himself. That is true for us today. When you hear prophetic words that exalt a man or exalt some other agenda or point people to a movement or a ministry or a government or anything else, you have to stop and say, wait a minute here. This isn't calling me to repentance. This isn't pointing me back to scripture. This isn't pointing me back to the person of Jesus. This can't be supported with scripture. This might be some other spirit. We have to stop and check and look and evaluate and take a closer look. But the false prophets that are going to arise and deceive many people, even Christians, 
are likely going to prophesy correctly or be very close. But how will we know? Guys, there's a mass wide-scale gaslighting that's about to happen in the earth, this major deception that is coming when they will say that down is up and up is down, left is right and right is left. The sky is the ground and the ground is the sky. White is black and black is white. Good is evil and evil is good. Men are women and women are men. Kids are adults and adults are kids. What will be your anchor then? How will you know truth from error? It's going to be a pushing and a pulling and a twisting and a turning to the point people are so confused and discombobulated and they have no idea which way is up. It's the serpent that twists. Remember Genesis chapter 3 and Luke chapter 4. Remember Acts 16, the spirit of divination. When everything is subjective and relative, then truth, what is even truth anymore? When everything you see professes to be everything that it's not. What's your anchor then? And how will you actually know what's true? And how will you actually know what's false when what we see all around us is no longer reliable? Think about the rise of AI. Think about the deception that's there. You can make people sound and look however you want, and it's believable. It looks real. Deception is on the rise. Deception is on the rise and we have to be aware. We have to be anchored. How can we even know what the truth is? It's the word of God. It is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. People tell me, well, what's your physical evidence? What is the physical proof? What is it that you can see to prove your point? Not using the Bible. The Bible is the anchor. The Bible is the proof. The Bible is the word of God. We are called to walk by faith and not by by sight. We put our faith in Him. Jesus is the Word made flesh. The Word is the truth. He is the way, truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by Him. Many think they're just going to know truth from error. They think they're going to know the false prophet from the true prophet, but that's not what the Bible says. The serpent is deceptive. Many will be deceived and not even know they were deceived. Many are going to be deceived and go on deceiving others. This cannot be based on our truth or our experiential truth or what we think we see or what we think we know. It has to be founded in the Word of God. What is your house built on? Is it built on Him or is it built on what you see? Is it built on sand? So I'll wrap the video up with this. This is what I feel like God is speaking to my heart and the point that I want to drive home here. And many of you are likely hearing from Him some of these same things feeling some of these same things. This is a warning about the great deception that is on the rise and that things are not as they seem. Y'all, I don't know who the president is going to be. God hasn't told me who the president is going to be, but I know that there's a prophecy out there that says Donald Trump is going to waltz right into the White House. But this is what I'm telling you. We have to be prepared if Donald Trump is president, and we have to be prepared if Donald Trump is not president. We have to pray, God, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is a warning about not being wooed away by false signs and wonders. There's a prophecy out there that's getting major recognition right now. Christian outlets, secular outlets, it's all over the place. And to me, that's a major red flag already. But y'all, my spirit is rejecting it. I've tried to get on board. I've tried to say, okay, well, that's close enough. Okay, maybe I'm missing something. Okay, well, maybe I'm just one of the ones that doesn't get it. And the Lord just continues to tell me this same dull pressure, Adam, that same dull resistance you're feeling in your heart. Remember you had it in 2020. When everyone was prophesying, thus says the Lord, Donald Trump is going to be president. And then more began to prophesy and more began to prophesy. And it built and built and built to where there was this wave of people saying, thus says the Lord, Donald Trump is going to be president. And while God had not told me who the president was going to be, he did tell me this. That is not my voice. I am not speaking and I feel the same way then as I do right now. Who prophesied then that Biden was going to win? Who prophesied about the plague that was going to come? Am I saying prophecy is not for today? Not at all. But what I'm saying is they were speaking when God had not spoken. This is a warning not to be wooed away by false signs and wonders 
and false prophecies, y'all. Remain watchful. Remain vigilant. Be aware. Remain in his word. Pray thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Pray that our faith would not fail us in this season. I don't know who is going to win. None of us do. But we can just remain in prayer and remain faithful, saying he who promised is faithful. We know that if we're in him, we abide in him, we are secure in him, and he will protect us. Psalm chapter 91, read it if you need encouragement. He is with us and he will protect us. Read Psalm chapter 23 if you need encouragement. He is our shepherd and he is with us. This is a warning against idolatry, not to get our eyes on a man, on a political party, on a move or wave of patience patriotism on the government or any of that, but that we would keep our eyes on Jesus. Remember 2020. Don't go back to 2020. That's what I feel in my heart. Don't go back to 2020. I've already brought you out of it. Y'all, this is a testing season from the moment that bullet was shot, from the moment all of that happened up until what happens in November. This is a season of sifting and testing. And the Lord, I feel like is putting on my heart that he's testing his people saying, who are you going to serve? Are you going to keep your eyes on me? Or are we going to have a relapse back into idolatry? Remember, an evil and adulterous generation seeks a sign and they go after other gods. They go after other things that they think are going to save them. They cried out, we want Saul, we want Saul. And the Lord is warning us, don't go back to 2020. This is a call to get in the word of God, to spend time in prayer and know the shepherd's voice and the shepherd's voice alone. He said, "You, if you are my sheep, then my sheep will know my voice. There are many other voices out there, y'all, that are going to try to woo us away, to distract us, to get our eyes on other things that are going to come and say, thus says the Lord. But he says, my sheep will know my voice. We have to learn his word. We have to learn what he says. We have to know what he sounds like. And the only way to do that is to know his word. And in closing, I want to remind you of the lesson of the fig tree in Mark chapter 11, where Jesus sees this fig tree in the distance in leaf. It was professing to have fruit, but it was out of season. But as Jesus gets a closer look at the tree, as he gets closer to it, he sees it actually has no fruit and he curses the tree and it dies. Likewise, he goes to the temple expecting to find it as a house of prayer for all nations, but instead he finds it as a den of thieves. So he cleans the temple and he flips the table and cleans it all out. And I feel the message that God is speaking to my heart is how will I find my church? How will I find the American church? Will I find you as a house of prayer for all nations? Or will I find you as a den of thieves? Remain watchful. Remain vigilant. Remain in prayer. Remain in the word of God. Listen for the shepherd's voice, the still, small voice. It's often not the loudest in the room. Listen for his voice and let's use our discernment. Pay attention. But I need you to know and I need you to hear this. The Lord, if you are his, he is your protector. Abide in him. Read Psalm 91. Read Psalm 23. Read them over and over and over. I encourage you to print them out, put them in your mirror, put them in your car, whatever you have to do. But he is your shield and he is your protection in this time, y'all. For those that are his, he protects them and the evil one cannot touch him. If you enjoy content like this and what we're doing here at Glasshouse TV, I would love to have you join us on our Patreon. The link will be below in the description. You can sign up for free if you would like to do that, or you can support us on a monthly basis if you would like to do that as well. But if you're not subscribed to the channel, I would love to have you and ask you to hit that like button. That's the thumbs up button, and that tells YouTube to send this video out to more people. But thank you so much for watching this message, and I will see you in the next one.